And welcome back, everyone. So I talked about the white cards on or Friday. Yeah, I know I did Friday. Uh, and now I'm here to do <laughs> to finish this up. So expect four more videos, basically. Well, five, because I got to do the lands and the artifacts. Um, but yeah, five more videos to finish out the day. And then I got box office tomorrow, and then my schedule resets as always for that. So we're finishing up the blue cards. So starting off, we have Broken Concentration, a instant one generic, two blue. Counter target spell with madness three and one gen three generic one blue, so it's it's a cancel. It's a cancel with madness where its madness cost is more. I I I don't get this card because I, you you discard it to try to ca counter something. I. I, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't. Because if you're discarding it, that's not in response to a spell being played normally. Uh, unless it's an opponent's spell, in which case you are got you have to discard a spell and then cancel the spell that caused it to discard. But that would c cancel this carding. So, there's, it's, that, this makes no sense on a card. It really does not. Now, in terms of just it is, it's a cancel. It will see blue play. It will. So, uh, the art's pretty cold, though, because it's a guy whose mind is literally being affected. Some minds bend under pressure, others break. You see this guy who, basically, almost like in shards of, bro of mirrored glass and stuff. It's, it's cool art. Catalog. One uh, blue, two generic, instant. Draw two cards, and then discard a card. The appearance of these warped stones throughout the province is too pers uh, pervasive to be random. More evidence is needed to determine the reason behind them. Temio's Journal. Temu's Log, Stargate 2919 in Instrad. We travel to this forest plane to stop a possible Cthulhu esque being. Still, will we see Temu and sit? I don't know. But Catalog is actually a pretty okay card. Especially it's just, it's <laughs> instant speed. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a fine card for instant speed. Nothing terrible. Um, Drowd, you get, you'll get one card out of it. Discard a card, Apostle Madness Enabler, all that goodness. Uh, confirm suspicions. Now, I may have covered this card once, but just in case I didn't, three generic, two blue, instant, counter target spell, investigate three times. So, you're, get, you're getting your worth out of it in terms of the draw. In terms of the, uh, investigate three times. But, it is an expensive, expensive counter spell to have, so I wouldn't carry more than maybe one. But that being said, you'll be drawing three cards probably the next turn or a couple turns later. Or whenever you decide to use it. Uh, deny existence. Instant. Two generic. One blue. Counter target creature spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Good way to stop delirium. There's a lot of exile in this style already. Uh, it's great. It's only killer two creatures, but creatures are always a big part of anyone's playing. So this is just a card you're going to hold on to and wait for the right moment to possibly use on them. It's fine for what it is. I don't see much else coming for it. Uh, Drown Yard Explorers, three ge uh, uh, three generic, one blue, two four, human wizard, when ex enters the battlefield, investigate. It's two for four, two four for two four, it's got a decent toughness to it to kind of, you know, keep opponents at bay for a little bit, and then you get to have the free draw spell. You could you basically consider it like a free draw spell, more or less, pay until you draw. Other than that, though, just kind of, eh. Uh, I mean, I'll use it if I got it. If I end up getting it in the pre-release, I'll use it. Uh, but nothing amazing from that. Next up, Dr uh, Drunau Corpse Trawler. Three generic, one uh, blue, so four mana. One one, zombie. When it enters the battlefield, put a two two black zombie creature token into the battlefield. Target zombie gains death touch till the end of turn if you pay one generic, one black. So more or less you're getting three power and toughness uh, on for four between two buys, and you can give either of them death uh, death touch if you were to go down that route. Uh, it's okay. It's definitely not bad, and the giving death touch is pretty decent. But then again, you expect card, you expect zombies usually to have some form of death touch or something like that, intimidate whatever. Uh, but for what it's worth, uh, that's a usable card. If you're in blue and black, definitely I would play that. Uh, Ur Erdwall Illuminator, a one one, a one generic, one one three, one blue. So one blue, one generic, 
one three flying spirit whenever you investigate for the first time each turn and investigate an additional time. So whenever you investigate investigate once in a turn, you instead draw two cards. So if you're running the investigate deck, that's actually pretty good. Otherwise, if you're not running investigate, this card really is kind of useless. I mean, well, not useless. It's a one three flyer for two. That alone can see some play in its own right. You're using this in conjunction with Investigate, though. If you use it, you're running Investigate, I would assume. Uh, next, Essence Flux. So just one blue. Instant. Exile target creature you control. Then return that creature to the battlefield under its owner's control. If it's a spirit, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, good combat trick. It's, it's a flicker ability. And if you happen to be running any spirits, it's a flicker with a pump. So, okay, I can see where it could be useful. The, I mean, what was it? Cloud Shift was the one, the white one from Avison. That's all playing. People loved that card. Uh, they loved Restoration Angel. So, yeah, it's very, very likely to see uh, some play in some way, shape, or form. Fleeting Memories. Enchantment. Two generic, one blue. When Fleeting Memories enters the battlefield, investigate. Okay, we all know what that does at this point. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Now, that means you're automatically going to get three cards off the top of their library. But if you're running a clue deck, which there's a lot of clue support in this, a lot of investigate supporting cards, it's far better in the way it works that way because you could just mill, 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 mill. And I'm going to take a bottle. Whatever. I'm not going to stop her. Ghostly Wing. So, uh, yeah, uh, just to recap, Enchantment's not bad, but this is a weird format where milling your opponent could work against you because Delirium and things along those lines, but who knows? Ghostly Wings. One generic, one blue. Enchantment Aura. Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature gets plus one, plus one, and flying. Discard a card and return this creature... Return Chanted Creature to its owner's hand. Got the Madness Enabler there. It's it's a pump 1-1 uh, one, one in flying. There's nothing wrong with that. It's overall solid blue card, solid blue enchant uh, creature. I, I dig it. Uh, that's definitely going to be usable. If you got big creatures, like uh, if you're going blue and any other color that has bigger creatures than blue. Yeah, I see that. Uh, gone Missing. Four generic, one blue. Sorcery. Put target permanent on the top of its owner's library and then investigate. Sometimes it's best for the lost to stay lost. And you just see cat. I'm liking it to Captain Jack Sparrow's hat just floating in the water. Um, but uh, no, it's it's expensive. It's a sorcery too. It's not even a, a combat trick. So yeah, I, this is this is uh, this is not a very good card. I mean, yeah, you get the. It's not worth the five mana investment. I don't think. So I mean, I, I you've heard me praising a lot of the cards in this, but when I think a card is bad, I think a card is bad. Like I think that red mythic angel is a fucking bad card. I, that's I don't see that as a good card at all, and it's definitely not a mythic rare, uh, except for maybe its physical stats and mana cost. So yeah, uh, we talked about Jason Scrutiny. We are, did just the win, did that one. Manic Scribe. I believe I have not talked about this one. When Manic Scribe enters the battlefield. Each opponent puts the top three cards of his or her library into the graveyard. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if there are four or more cards, it types among Delirium. Put, three, uh, put the top three cards of his or her library into the graveyard. And you will notice that this person's hands, fingers, if you look closely at this, I'm assuming this is a woman, some of them are curling like tentacles, Cthulhu-esque, Eldrazi-esque tentacles. Now... I still would prefer it not to be Ember Cruel, but I really... Or Immacarul, as some people sometimes call it. Point being is that it's really looking like we're going towards Ember Cruel, which, fine. I, I, if they work it in a good story way, and they work the cards out in the next set where it just doesn't feel completely disconnected from this one, I, I'll be okay with it. As for the card itself, I can dig this. It's, a, it's, 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 it's got a butt on it. You can get it out in turn two, and it can block for a few creatures. Hello, baby! Um... So, uh, oh, I hope she doesn't keep taking bottles. Um, I mean, there, there aren't many soda bottles up here, but we toss them over into the cellar area for recycling. Um, yeah, no, I can dig it just for its stats alone. Well, not stats alone. The stats alone are just kind of okay. It, it can block a few things. It, doesn't, can't, it can't do damage unless you pump it. But the fact is, is that it's a beginning of each upkeep effect, and there's I think there's a cycle of these as well. And as long as you got that going, you're constantly milling your opponent. Now, granted, in this format, yes, it can get delirium. But I assume if you're running this card, this type of card, you're running a more mill-based strategy. So you're not just milling with this one card. And if you have multiple, that's like 
three, that's six top cards on top of the deck each uh, upkeep. Nine. If you're going all four, that's twelve. That can get that can get bad very fast for your opponent, especially in limited. You got if you get at least two to three of these in limited or sealed or the pre-release, and you're able to get your delirium off. This thing's gonna wreck your opponent's shit. I don't care what your delirium effects are doing. This thing will wreck their shit. So, um, but that being said, it's tit for tat. This thing is very squishy and can die fairly easy to any real burn spell or targeted effect. So it's tit for tat. I like it because I'm a fan of Mill, but I can definitely see where no one, uh, where people aren't gonna like it. Moving on, nagging thoughts. Uh, to one generic, one blue sorcery. Look at the top two cards of your opponent's library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into the graveyard. You can wait. What? I don't get these madness effects that are either more expensive than the madness cost or the exact same price. Uh, it's the ex it's madness cost is the exact same price as its mana cost. I I'm certain there were cards like that. Uh, the effect uh, as a whole, you basically you get to draw a card and put a card in the graveyard. It works good. It's a draw engine, and you get the and you get to choose by the way which one it is. So, it's a draw engine, plus you get to, again, get off Delirium. So, there you go. Uh, Nibblis uh, of Dusk, two generic, one blue. Spirit, Flying, Prowess, two, one. It is that avian card from, um, what was it? Oh, Konzatark here, that flying avian. That, that with Prowess, That's ex this is the exact same card, but with a spirit instead. And that was a fine card, so I, it's, it's a good card. Uh, there's not much I can say about that. Um, uh, pieces of the Puzzle. This is a different one, because uh, I was about to say pour over the pages, but no, pe uh, Pieces of the Puzzle. Two generic, one blue, reveal, uh, sorcery. Reveal the top five cards of your library. Put two, put up to two instants or sorcery cards from among them into your hand and the rest in the graveyard. Again, Delirium, but it's a good way of searching if you're running a lot of uh, spell-heavy stuff and not so many uh, uh, creature-heavy things. But overall, it's just kind of meh, unless you got some really bomb spells in your deck. What's what you growling up, up? What's got your attention? Hmm? Hmm, okay. Uh, Domino was growling. Maybe she saw... Maybe did you see a squirrel? Is that what you saw? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, press for answers. One generic, one blue. Tap target creature. It does not untap during its controller's next untap step and investigate. Good com Well, not even a good contract. combat trick. Just if they um, somehow play a big old fatty. Like if they play Avacyn. Avacyn does not have haste, remember. You can be like, no, you're not, you're not going to attack me this turn. So, yeah, tap you. And then I'm going away now. Bye. I'm going to investigate some things. I they investigated. Oh, shit, you're still here. But overall, it's okay card. You'll get a draw from it. You'll get the clue counter. Reckless Scholar, two generic, one blue, two, one. Human Wizard, target player, draws a card and then discards a card. It's a looter ability on a blue guy. That's what kind of thought, usually thought with blue, but Red got it for a while and still has it. But it's okay. Madness Enabler, as always. Um, that's, you're going to hear me repeat that a lot with these Skiss card effects. Madness Enabler. Because there, there's a lot of Madness in the set. Um, there's Madness, I think, in fact, every color. Except maybe green. I don't think green has Madness. But uh, that might just be how I saw it. Um, Rise of the Tits. Now, did I do talk about this one? No, I don't think I did. Rise from the... Oh, Tides, sorry. Rise from the Tides. Five generic, one blue sorcery. Put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token into the battlefield. Tap for each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. Again, you need to be running spell-heavy strategy, but I could see where you could pay this uh, six mana and you get three zombies easy. I could see that. Um, Seagraph Scab... It's a 1-3 for 1 and one, 1 generic, 1 blue, no effect. It's a vanilla creature. It, it, they, but the but magic runs on these things. Um, Silberlid Lind Snapper. It's a turtle. 5, to five uh, generic, 1 blue, so 6 mana. 6-6, six, six, can't attack unless you've cast a non-creature spell this turn. So it's like a bad prowess. You need to cast a non-spell to attack with this and it, bad cards need to exist in magic that to make the good cards even better and this is a bad card let's get that out of the way this is just not a good card don't play this card um silent observer three generic one blue flying one five spirit i like the art uh it's got a big old butt on it but for four mana i could play better things 
sleep paralysis. I love this art. This art's just cre creepy. It's almost like the ghost of Christmas future looming over the sky. Sleep paralysis. Three generic, one blue. Enchant aura. Chant creature. Sleep and enters the battlefield. Uh, tap, uh, tap enchanted creature, and it does not untap during its controller's untap step. So this is a somewhat better version of that investigate ability in that it's an actual enchantment that keeps something t untapped or keeps something tapped. But it is more expensive, so if you're going to run it in conjunction with that, I would, but maybe only one copy, maybe two. But I love the art. Art's awesome. Stitched Mangler, two generic, one blue, two, three. Zombie Horror, it enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, tap target, uh, target creature and opponent controls. That, again, doesn't untap during the untap set. Blue seems to do a lot of tapping and untapping in this set, or keeping things from tapping. Um, but, uh, wait, what was the pricing? Oh, for three, it's a two, three, and it t enters the battlefield tap, but it would still tap something else, and that doesn't untap, so it gives you a bit of an advantage. If you got other stuff on the field to kind of go with that, it can work. Storm Rider Spirit, four generic, one blue. Spirit, three, three, flash and flying. It's okay. Th those things are usually just okay. Um, art's kind of cool, though. It's just dragging lanterns with it. In fact, a lot of the spirits have lanterns with them. That's it. Yeah, a lot of it, I just, and it just occurred to me right now that a lot of the spirits I see in these um, pictures are all carrying lanterns with them. Now, I wonder if that's some, there's some sort of flavor thing that goes with that. I mean, I'm just checking it because I know there's some white spirits too. Uh, white one does not have that. Okay, that white one didn't have a lantern. Uh, Spectral Shepherd did not have a lantern. It, now I'm talking about lanterns. I'm pretty. I that was that was my last blue card to talk about. I'll I'll do the uh, black cards in just a little bit. But I'm just checking out the spirits in each uh, in the previous colors right now. Uh, yeah. Okay, that one's got lanterns with it. No, yeah, lanterns, they all, all of them seem to have, be carrying lanterns. Fascinating. I wonder if there's some sort of flavor standpoint, or if they just thought it looked cool. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on the remaining black cards. Um, thanks for watching. I'll be back in a little bit, a few seconds with the black cards. Or, <laughs> that was all the blue cards. I'll be back with the black cards. I'll be right back. Thanks for watching, and see you.